So what can I say?
exhausted my soul lord to you surrendered all i am is yours so what can i say What can I do? But offer this heart, oh God, completely to you. With our eyes closed and our hands extended to heaven, would you help me to pray for some in our congregation that are not doing well physically and people that are sick, people that are struggling with different circumstances. Maybe it's you and you know this person or somebody in your life. Father, we come before you today, Lord. We ask you, God, for those in our lives, in our church, God. Father God, we ask you that you would just heal those who are sick, those who are struggling with whatever it is, Father God. We ask you, Lord, that you would just heal them and touch them. We Together we ask you, God, for healing in the bodies for people that is either have colds, Father God, expecting, others recuperating from surgeries, Father God, dealing with things of age, Lord, accidents. Lord, we bring you every person in this room that needs a or healing touch, Jesus, in their lives. Many are not in this room. And we ask you, Lord, that you would heal them and touch them. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen and amen. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Before you go and say hello to somebody, let me tell you something that just came to my mind. We have an intercession group that I send prayer requests. If you want to be part of that, talk to me, and we can put you in that group. It goes in English and in Spanish. And I receive quite often prayer requests. And so if you are a person that we can trust, that you are not going to be gossiping about everything you receive in that, and we can just have you praying for those individuals that need prayer, let me know, and I'll put you in that group. And now you can say hello to somebody. God bless you. <laughs> Hug somebody, say hello to somebody.
Good morning. You may be seated today. It's a beautiful day. Amen. Beautiful day to be in church. And why do we get together Sundays? Because the Bible says the early church got together the first day of the week. And I think if I'm right, Sunday is the first day of the week. It's the third Sunday of the month. And we do uh, two special offerings. We don't collect it like we used to. We have the boxes back there. But we are trying to pay off the soonest and the fastest we can the property next door. So that's the third Sunday of the month is the building fund offering. And whatever you want. Yes, no. Yeah, they don't break. Is another one? No, totally dead. Now it's back alive. Amen. Thank God for people who is in training to do ministry. You know what? That is a blessing. You know what happens when you don't have people training to do ministry? Once that one person who knows how to do everything cannot come, everything falls apart. So if you want to be in training of ministry, it's a good opportunity to tell you. Let us know. Thank you so much. And so it's the third Sunday of the month, like I said, and we are taking. So if you want to give a special offering every month for the building fund, all that goes 100% to a second payment or additional payment to the mortgage every month. Let's go to the Bible, to the book of Matthew today, verse 28 of chapter 11. I don't know why I said that. Maybe I'm changing. There is a word for that when you see things backwards like that. But European. European. <laughs> that might be my blood. Okay, that's the problem. Matthew chapter 11, verse 28. And I want to talk to you about the second part of how are you feeling? How are you feeling? How are your feelings? Are you controlled by feelings or not? How many of you guys have feelings? How many of you guys have kids who have feelings? You know what I'm talking about? Ooh, they have feelings and emotions. Anybody married to somebody who has feelings sometimes? Ooh, you know? Why are you... <laughs> I love because Katie says that I am more emotional than her. And I speak more than her. So I don't know if I was supposed to be the woman and she's supposed to be the man. But I don't know how that works. But let's not get into that. Bring the rake and not the shovel. Amen. Jesus says in Matthew eleven twenty-eight, 28, come to me. What did he says? Come to me. If you are what? Labor and are heavy laden. And then he says, I will give you rest. I will give you rest. Let's pray. Father, we thank you this morning. Because your word doesn't lie. Never has, never will. Your word is the only truth on this planet and this universe. And Lord, if we are of heavy burdens and tiredness and exhaust, and we say we know you, God, and you say that we can go to you and you will give us rest, let us discover, Lord, today, and as we walk with you, how did this work? Lord, you did not call us to heavy ladens and to heavy things that we cannot carry that will burn us down and destroy us. You call us to take your yoke. I ask you give me wisdom to communicate your word. And I thank you for the work of your spirit. In Jesus' name we pray. And everybody says, Amen. Amen. How are you feeling? I want to help us to accomplish the most without getting emotionally and spiritually exhausted. Have you ever been exhausted? More than physically. Because you go sleep 8, 10, 12 hours and you'll do better. But emotionally, drain. Can't do this anymore. I am done. Sucking the life out of me without making a hole. 
And Jesus says, I know that you're going to get tired and heavy laden. And you will have emotions and you're going to feel, he even feel tired and he feel exhausted and angry and mad and happy and merciful and all the feelings he had. But he never was controlled and his decisions were never controlled by a emotion or feeling, but they were controlled by the calling of God in his life. That is maturity. Last Sunday we said the thermometer, and then we have the thermostat. Thermometer. A thermostat is a part of the car that has a thermometer. When it gets really hot, it opens and it starts making decisions. Emotions dictate your behavior. It's easy to sin, easy to sin and hurt others. Amen. Have you ever been hurt by somebody who was led by the emotions? And they said something. They did something. Or maybe you did something. But in Matthew chapter 11 verse 28. Jesus says come to me. Come to me. When we talked last Sunday. And I just want to remind you this. That we all have a calling in our lives. And then we have different assignments. My assignment is your, not yours, and yours is not mine. I cannot impact the people that God called you to impact. I'm a father of a few kids. You're a father or mother of others. You have a spouse that I am not married to. Thank God I'm married just to one lady. But God calls us in those assignments, and we should be controlled by the voice of God in our lives. But how often and how quick we listen to other things that come in our head. And many of them are related to a yoke that was not the yoke of Jesus. And only the Holy Spirit, and I pray the Holy Spirit can help you and help me to see the yokes that are not by Jesus. The first point is come to me. Jesus doesn't say, come to some classes that I will do. Nothing wrong with classes. This can be seen as a class. This will not change your life. Only Jesus can change the heavy laden in your life. This can teach you, teach you how to go to him maybe. Or what are the things in our life. He doesn't say, come to get involved in this project. He doesn't say, come and do more. He's not like Buddhism who has the eightfold path of Islam, five pillars. Or Jesus doesn't say, go and read a book of the seven habits of highly effective people. How many of you guys would like to make a big impact with your life? Let me see your hand. A big impact with your life. All of us want to. All of us want to. I want to be an influence in the life of Juni. Is that wrong? No. That's my granddaughter. Another one that we don't know is a girl and is a boy. And everybody's asking, well, this is like big, this big. I don't know if we can figure out that yet. I want to make an impact. What Jesus says, he offers himself because some of the <laughs> sorry, heavy laden or yokes that we have in our lives, we were not designed to carry them alone. There are people who carry the heavy laden like this. This is a yoke that I made, very light. Where is Jesus here? Nowhere. Me, 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 me. I was not created to carry this alone. I was a young or new pastor in this church as the lead pastor. I was a staff member for about 11 years or so, till 2011. I just did my job as a Spanish pastor and whatever else I thought that I could help. But one day overnight, 
with Katie, we became the lead pastors in this church. And a few weeks later, the income of the church was smaller than the outcome of the church. You know what that means. And I am scratching my head. I'm thinking, if I don't get a compensation from this church, that will balance the difference. So I'm driving to the church, and I remember, I drive and I park by the second window over there, and I am thinking, okay, here's the solution, Christian. You can go and work at Home Depot. You speak two languages, habla español, y entonces a Home Depot. I can hang Shirak. I can do floors. And I did not hear God speaking an audible voice, but I hear God speaking to me. What's going on with this little pastor with the church? I hear God speaking to my spirit these words. I did not call you to pay the bills of the church. I call you to shepherd the sheep. Boom. Everything changed. Now I am on the right side. Can you see that? He is here. He is here. I walk into the church. I go to pray. I start praying. I'm walking around this place. And I'm walking there. And now I have in my head everything changed automatically. I cannot pay the bills of this church. Do you know that? I'm not a millionaire who has unlimited amount of money coming into my pocket every month. And the lights need to keep on. That was 12 years ago. And in 12 years, we never missed a payment or a bill. Never, not one month late on anything. Because this is the way that Jesus says, you got to take the assignments that I call you. And I'm walking around and I'm praying. And I don't know if I open my Bible or I just hear this in my, remember, like God is speaking to me about this whole situation of the finances. Psalm 23, the last verse says, and I, and I, it was like, it impacted me. And this is the verse that says, Psalm 23, the last verse, I think it's verse 6. six. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Not only that I have a solution that God says he's going to pay the bills. But just in case that I'm thinking, okay, God, if you can pay the bills two more months, I am out of here. He is telling me, you're going to be in this church for a long time. I don't think forever, <laughs> but for a long time. And he was faithful to produce generosity in the heart of the people in this church. And the bills are being paid. And when I say, if you can give 20 or $30 more, I know I committed to give more to the building fund. I think that God might stir some people's heart and they start helping us so we can pay off the property faster so we can build. Are you following me here? Not because I talk about money all the time. It's because I know that God is the one who has to touch your heart. Come to me. He offers himself. We were never designed to carry the burden alone. Anybody here making decisions because you're young and you have to make decisions? That's a burden. Anybody parenting, grandparenting, serving God? If you do this, later here and later there, you were not designed to carry the burdens alone. God says, take my yoke upon you. I want to be on the other side. And the last time, and the first time, and every time I find in my life, the other horse that is on this side is a lot stronger than this little horse on this side. You following me here? 
the yoke created to pull the wagon. Jesus invites us to take a time away from the horizontal stuff and find an hour or two or a place of fasting or a time with him, with the Bible, and we can go to him. He offers himself, the creator of the universe. Recently they discovered, they did the calculation of the sun, of the grains of the sun that are on this planet. Calculating the beaches, calculating the deserts. Did you know that they discovered there is more stars in the universe or more suns in the universe than grains of sand in this planet? Science discovered that. The one who made that says, come to me. He offers himself. The second thing he says in verse 29, take my yoke. Take my yoke. Like I said, it's a wooden piece of a piece of wood that you put on two oxes, two burros, two horses. Because the weight has to be distributed evenly. Now this is the thing. You're going to struggle with this if you want to go faster than the other guy on the other side. Are you here with me? I know people who have done financial decisions without seeking the Lord. And they got into something without seeking the Lord. And God was not on this <coughs> side here. He might rescue you. But don't ask God to bless something that he did not call you to do. I was talking with a young person a couple of weeks ago. And this young person... Christian, amazing person, came to know this other person. And Christian come, they all Christian, they all seek the Lord, and they start calling and texting and FaceTime meeting. You know where I'm trying to go. There is going like a little more special. There's just a friendship. And all of a sudden, this other person ghosted them. Talk to somebody younger than 30, and they'll explain what that means. They left them unread. That means they read your text and they don't answer. And they don't answer for a long time. And all of a sudden, this young person comes and talks to me and says, God spoke to me. And God told me, don't make a good thing a God thing. Mm, this, is, this is a yoke that only God can help you with this one. A good thing, but not a God thing. Amen? Now, if you marry, that person is the perfect will of God for you. My daddy teach me after you marry, open your eyes huge before you do. But after, close them to every person in the universe and now that's the will of God for you are you following me here but a good thing but not a God thing can be a yoke that God never intended you to carry he can deliver you that from that yoke but you should not ask God to help you with something that he does not call you to carry are you am I making sense here I don't want you to be all messed up, but I want you to be sensitive to God. Financial decisions, assignments, relationships. God says, I want to partner with you. Part of taking Jesus' yoke is giving up control in letting him, and letting him set the pace of your assignment. There is some people who want to be faster than God. 
and that will tire you. But this time, I got to do this, and I got to accomplish this, and I got to save so much, and I have to have so many people, and I have to do this, and by this time, and by this time, and you start setting yourself goals that God never told you. And you go crazy because you have yoked yourself to yourself. And Jesus says, what? Take my yoke. The greater, listen, to, if you take notes, I, want, I invite you to write this down. The greater you need to control things, the more you will feel out of balance, stressed out, and fatigued. The more you have to be in control. I want to be in control. And what I'm saying, when I do decisions who are not led by God, what I'm saying is I trust myself more than God. But I really want to. But I really don't see anything wrong with this. But I really, 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 really want to. And these are my goals. And this is what I'm going to accomplish. And this is who am I going to become. Be careful. Because you might become a bloody nose in the floor before you want to. Because God is trying to put you under his yoke and say, hey, we got to do this for a long time. And you need to be humble and gentle. And you need to be, let me lead you. Others yoke themselves to others. Attempting to please others at all cost. People yoke to other people have an unhealthy need to be recognized and liked by others. I'll say this one more time. When you yoke yourself to somebody else and you need to be recognized by this person, you will have yoked yourself to something unhealthy. Oh, Pastor, I, I got married to this person. You have no idea. If I don't make her happy or make she happy, all hell breaks loose. What are we going to do about that? He says, come to me. And yoke yourself to me. Maybe you have a very unhealthy perspective of how much you need to please others. And God needs to speak to you about that. It is so sad to see people who have yoked themselves to somebody and then that relationship didn't work and how the devil came in and destroyed that person's life. They were not yoked to the will of God. They were yoked to another person and that relationship didn't work. Or if they work, they wanted to please that person more than a very healthy place. We yoke ourselves to success, making a high goal of achieving and marks that have to arrive. And some few people can survive this success. That's why being yoked to Jesus is critical and less likely to compare ourselves to others. I know more than one case of more than one pastor who made a decision to put the church before his marriage or before his family. And not that they did something wrong, but they did not have a spouse who would run the race to their speed so that spouse 
was left behind so much that finally the papers of divorce showed up and they divorced that spouse and they continue pastoring that church. Was that clear enough? They were yoked either to themselves or they were yoked to success or they were yoked to something that was not the yoke of Jesus. And the third thing that Jesus says, he says, learn from me. It's pretty quiet today here. It's just me. He says, come to me, take my yoke, and learn from me. He says, learn from me, for I am, what? Gentle and lowly or humble, many translations says, of heart. And you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is what? Easy and my burden is light. Here is the secret. After he says, come to me, he says, yoke yourself to me. And then he says, learn from me. Do you see how many me's are there? Come to me. Yoke yourself to him and learn from him. Who is what? Gentle and humble at heart. I'm going to say something that I really hope you understand. Life will get heavier and heavier and heavier as less humility and less gentleness you have in your heart. The less gentle you are, he doesn't say, I'm going to make everybody else around you gentle. He says, you need to learn from him who is what? Humble and gentle of heart. In Galatians chapter 5 verse 23, the gentleness is a fruit of the spirit. And that word in Galatians uses the word gentle in Greek, the same word that they will use to a horse who can weigh maybe a thousand pounds or more is stronger than you can kick faster and, and run faster and destroy you and kick you and, and jump on you and back you off but he has decided to be controlled by his master that is the word gentle it's not that I cannot scream louder than Katie or my kids. It's not that I can come up with some clever idea of how to humiliate them or how to kick the door, how to kick the cat and the dog at the same time. It's not that I cannot be a wild horse. How many of you guys know that you can be a crazy wild horse let me see, anybody here? Anybody has act like a crazy wild horse when somebody wanted to jump on you? The word Greek for gentle is that. Go on your floor, I'm going to jump on you and kick you. And the horse can do this and jump on you and break every one of your bones and kill you. Did you know that? And that's why life gets so heavy. Because we have a hard time learning to be, what? Gentle. I wonder how many marriages, how many families, how many relationships will enhance their effectiveness by practicing more gentleness. Anybody says amen to that. 
how many more relationships, marriages, relationships, son, daughter, mom, grandpa, um, ministry, a home, a school, a work, how many more relationships will be so much more effective and beautiful and tender and soft if we would be developing more gentleness? I wonder how many marriages, families, relationships, failures will have been prevented if gentleness have been more Evident. Here is two gentle people. A mother, a wife, or a father that comes and very gently says to the other family member, can you please, when you take a shower, now after you put it in the floor and picked up all the hair on the floor and all the water on the floor and it's dripping, it seems like you make a big old ball, even a big old knot, and you put it on the top of the little pipe or you just leave it in the floor. Can you please just unhold it, open it up, and hang it here in this two feet pipe and in New Mexico after three or four hours, Maybe that towel can be used again. That's a gentle person. Amen? And the other gentle person will say, Yes, I am so repenting. Oh, please forgive me. I grew up with a mom who let me be a mess with the towels. And she maybe got tired of me. And I don't want to criticize her. But she should have kicked me harder. When I left that towel full of hair and water in the floor. That you honey have to pick up every night. And I commit to. And I never want to do that again. That's a gentle person. I want to open that. I want to hang it there. And leave it hang right there and honey if i ever forget again would you please come and remind me because i do not ever want to leave that there but a not gentle person would say es el trabajo de las mujeres in spanish that's the work of a woman to pick up the towels and hang them right like that's you know what i'm talking about but two gentle people We'll deal with stuff like that. I'm wrong. Everybody else, you know, I'm talking this from a person that lived this before. With his mom. I was 40 some years old and my mom was 70 some years old. And I went to visit my mom and my family and my oldest sister's son was going to get married in another province, we say, which is another state for here. And I was 40 some years old. And we were spending one or two days in my sister's house. Then we we're going to go to this other city, have a big party. And then we're all going to go to spend a whole week, the whole family, with a family to another town. And so my mom comes and says, Christian, I know you're going to take a shower now because you're getting ready for the wedding. Would you please use one of the towels of your sister in the bathroom and not use the towel you took from my house, which is 1,200 kilometers down south that I brought because I don't take towels to Argentina. And she said... Please, and it's very humid over there, and it takes a long time for towels to dry. He told, she told me to not use, please, the towel from her house and put it all wet with my clothes in the suitcase, but use my sister towel so I can hang it in the bathroom of my sister's house. We're going to come back in a week, and it's going to be maybe dry. And you know what? I said... I am 40 some years old. I raised four kids. I don't tell my teenager kids what to do with the towel. And my mom's eyes started crying. And I'm like, why are you crying? I'm telling you, you don't have to tell me what to do. And if I want to get a big old towel full of water and put it with all my t-shirts and my jeans, that's my business. That's what I'm thinking. Are you following me here? And my mom started crying. And she told my older sister, which is a mom also. And my older sister did not took me 
my side. I had to apologize, ask for forgiveness, and all kinds of stuff before the big first grandson first wedding of my mother. Shame on me. Can you say that? Shame on you, Pastor. Forty-some years old, and you think because you raised four kids and you don't tell them what to do with the towel, your mom cannot give you a good idea? Prideful, cocky, not gentle, not merciful, not understanding. Anybody is mad at me now, you have to forgive me. That was a long time ago. I hope I learned my lesson. But God says, you come to me. Listen, my friends, you cannot change other people, but you can treat them with gentleness and a humble heart. And even if they jump on you and yell at you and scream and lie about you and exaggerate and you this and you that and you don't deserve this and you're not. you still the one who makes the decision, am I going to open my mouth and defend myself and scream all kinds of stuff? Or am I going to go to Jesus and ask him, why am I so mad when my mom tells me to use this towel and not that towel? Are you following me here? You cannot change other people, but you can change how you deal with them with a gentle and humble spirit. Look at somebody, tap on their shoulder and ask them, are you gentle and patient with others? Are you gentle? Are you patient with others? Or do you tell them everything you think when they don't act like you want them to act? I'm going to use Martha here. Are you gentle and patient with others? Or do you tell them whatever goes through your mind when they don't act like you want them to act? When I am not gentle and humble and patient with others, the yoke gets heavier and heavier and heavier and heavier and heavier and heavier. And, heavier. and you will quit the assignments that God has given you. How many in this room will say, if being married means living 500 more years with this person, I'll take it, God, because I know that with you, I can learn to be gentle and hard, and I can be patient, and I can have a happy marriage for another 500 years. Or oh, others are thinking, the soonest she or he dies, hallelujah, praise the Lord. He will not call you. Being humble in your assignment, like Jesus. He says in Mark 10 45, He says, For even the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve and to give his life a ransom for many. Romans, Paul says, do not be defeated by evil, but you defeat evil with good. So when that person jumps on you and treats you like a horse and kicks you and pushes you around and says, Ran now, they're not being good maybe with you. Do not be defeated by evil. In the verse before, or one or two verses before, says, do not vengeance. Vengeance is of the Lord. Colossians 3.12. Paul says we have to clothe ourselves with humility. Therefore, Colossians 3.12 says, therefore, as the elected of God, holy and beloved, put on tender mercies. Kindness, humility, meekness, long suffering. See what I'm talking about? 
Here is the yoke. Here is the yoke. The Bible says that we have to be what? Tender mercies, kindness, humility, meekness, long-suffering. Solomon says in Proverbs 18, 12, Before destruction, the heart of a man is haughty. And before honor is what? Humility. How many of you guys want the honor of God in your life? Maybe you are... In some areas of your life, you are honored by God already. And let's go quick to the next verse. And in James chapter 4 verse 6 says, But he gives more grace. Therefore he says, God resists the proud, but he gives what? Grace to the humble. So is it about me winning the fight? Or is it about me living under the grace and the mercies and the honor of God? What do you choose? You cannot have both. The Bible says that if you are humble, if you're gentle, God will honor you. He honors humility and he gives grace to the humble. How many of you guys are blessed by God in one or two areas? Big time. Let me see. Big time you're blessed. Maybe in your marriage, in your finances, in your health, in your ministry, in your relationship with your kids. You have this amazing granddaughter and say, man, what an honor that is. I did not deserve this granddaughter. She's just amazing. God is honoring me. God is blessing me. Or I can have this wrong spirit and put on what yoke? The yoke of the flesh. Me, myself, and I, and I say do whatever I want to do. But on the other side, Jesus says, you are getting tired of this marriage. Mm. You're getting tired of this kid. You're getting tired of this boss. You're getting tired of this worker. You're getting tired of this. And you are not treating them with gentleness and with a humble heart. But it's like, poor me, poor me, poor me, poor me. See, the Bible says that there's a great man blessed by God like never another king in Israel was. Honor and favor of God was upon this man. His name is King David. And one of his sons rebels, comes to take the throne, wants to fight David. David has a huge army and three amazing generals. And instead of staying in Jerusalem and fighting with his son, he says, I do not want to share any blood. He takes his army and starts walking down the Jordan River away from the capital. And here is a relative to Saul, the guy who was before then David, who is mad at David because his dad is not the king anymore. And he starts screaming and yelling at them and throwing rocks at David with his whole entire army and his generals walking by him. This son of your Absalom is coming to take because God is punishing you and God is doing to you what you did to my relative Saul. You kill him. Lie. And you this. And one of David's general, not having the heart of the humble and gentle person, he says to David, just give me the word, my king, and I'll cut his head of this dead dog, he says. And David says, Whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> this has nothing to do with the fight with the mother-in-law, with the neighbor, with the boss. She said, he doesn't say that, but in his heart he says, no, no, no. He says, this has nothing to do with this guy. God is watching us, and he will reward us according to how we treat our enemies, the people that treat us. The Bible says that God will honor those who honor him. First Samuel 2.3. Would you close your eyes right there where you are this morning? So, are you tired? Are you struggling? Is it heavy? 
Are you blaming others for this? When God says it's not about others, my yoke is light. My yoke is not heavy. was not intended for you to take it alone. My yoke becomes light, and you can do it for many decades as long as you learn from me. I don't know where you are this morning. But I want to encourage you and invite you. Right there where you are. Believe me, I also have not many, but here and there, people who does really wrong, close to me. It bothers me. And I want to just unfriend them, ignore them. I hope I never see them again. But God says, I will keep bringing them to you until you learn to be gentle and humble and kind and patient at heart. And it's not about what she or he did. It's about of my attitude. Even when they are kicking at you, yelling at you, lying at you, screaming at you, you can still receive the strength and the wisdom of God and the voice of God who tells you, take my yoke as a gentle. Father, we come before you. Would you just stand right there where you are? I believe many are in this room are struggling with this. Maybe you're about to give up on something that God assigned you to do. Because there is this one situation, this one person, this two or three people. And God says, I allow them to be there. I want to teach you to carry my yoke. Stop being yoked to yourself, to others, to success, to accomplishing, to winning and yoke yourself to me who is humble and gentle at heart. Lord, we ask you this morning. We ask you and we give you permission, Lord, to develop our hearts to be gentle. Gentle with those who are gentle and gentle with those who are not gentle. To be humble with those who are prideful and to be humble with everybody in our lives. To be kind and suffering long-suffering and patient with everybody in our lives, Lord, even when they make fun of us, even when they poke at us, even when they lie about us, even when they exaggerate about us, even when they are saying and blaming us of things that we know it's not as big as they say, Lord. Lord, I ask you that you would help us the many around us need to come to know Jesus, and the only way they will is by discovering a gentle, kind, and merciful person. Lord, you said that you humble yourself, and you did not expect it to be served, but to serve others and give your life as a ransom for many. Lord, maybe there is a person in this room who is dealing with an unbeliever in their lives who is very not kind and gentle. And you are allowing this so this Christian person can show Jesus through the gentle and humble heart. And like you, others will be, Father God, saved by our testimony. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. God bless you. Have a great week. God bless you. Close my eyes.